Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet, and um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the uh, the uh, second of uh, my connector series. Uh, we dealt with a hinge in the last one, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, another type of connector in this uh, this tutorial. So let's get get straight into it. If we go up to the Simulate menu. Um, go down to do, 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 dynamics and then we've got the connector so we can select that uh, it's on hinge at the moment so we need to change that to the second one down and that's car down and that is this um, oh, let's just go to display and always visible so when we click off it's still there and this is what it looks like um, this is what the uh, car down joint looks like um, so it's called cool, it's called a cardan mainly in Europe. Uh, the Americans call it this, the universal joint. Um, now this video is a really good example of what it actually does. So let's just have a look at it. There you go. You can see that it's um, translating this uh, rotational motion uh, to another object that is, you know is still rotating, but it's changing the angle of rotation. So it's a good way of transferring, you know, that motion. To, uh, a good example of this would be a car's axle um, where the drive shaft is rotating but it needs to transfer that rotational energy at a right angle to be taken elsewhere so um, there you go so to be honest with the cardan universal joint there's not many other uses for it apart from this um not that any any that i could think of and i looked as well um this is primarily what it's used for so i suppose we should just get on with it um so let's basically just try and simulate what we've just seen so i'm going to create a box uh, i'm also going to change my display mode to uh, ground shading line so we can see what's going on and uh we're going to move this box in this direction which is the z so let's go into our right view and I'm going to hold shift so we can snap. So if I hold shift now, it will snap to the grid points so we can pull it right out like that. Um, in fact, I might do that again. There we go. So there we go. And then with this box, I'm going to select the cube and uh, give it some segments in the x and i'm going to give it a few in the y as well so we've got this kind of thing going on and then i'm going to make it uh editable then i'm going to select the edges because we want to grab one of these loops and to get loops i'm sure you've seen me do it a million times by now um but you can either go up to the select menu and go to loop selection or you can use the shortcut u l and then you've got your loop so select this loop and then we'll shift click the other loop so we add to our selection go to the scale tool by pressing t and we'll pull these out there you go just like that and then what i'm going to do is press space to go back to my select tool uh select the polygon selection and select these two polygons here oh i didn't hold shift there we go now I've got these two polygons selected, I'm going to right click and go to extrude and click anywhere in the screen and drag out. Uh, that should do us. And then I'm going to create a cylinder. And that should be created as zero. And then I'm going to rotate it. Uh, and then press shift so we can click to increments of 10 degrees. There we go, so it's smack bang in the middle now. And then I'm going to go to the scale tool. You'll notice that if you try and scale the width and height of this, it scales the whole object as a whole. And that is because it's a primitive object. So you're going to need to um, make it editable. Now, one thing you should note by making this editable, uh, and this is just to do with Cinema 4D, if you go to the points tool, you can see in the corner, I've got a total points count of 146 points. So if we control A and select all the points of this, you can see there 146 points um, selected. <clears throat> now, if you right click and press optimize, you'll notice that that's gone down to 74. 
And the reason for that is um, when you make a cylinder editable in Cinema 4D, it doesn't weld the caps to the actual cylinder's body. Um, don't ask me why, but that is the case. You're going to need to optimize. Okay, so now we've got our um, optimized cylinder. We can actually um, scale this down in this direction. And if we grab this little thing, it will scale it down in the... There we go. So now we've got like this sort of tube type thing going through. And you can see that it's actually matching up with the, one of the directions of our cardan, which is great. Um, okay, so for the purposes of this, I'm going to grab these two things and uh, say connect objects and delete. Um, and then I'm going to rename this to A. And then I'm going to copy that underneath our connector and rena rename this one to B. Okay. Now, because our pivot point, you can see that it's at world zero here, um, the pivot point for that object. I've got a copy. They're just sat on top of each other at the moment. But if I go to my rotate tool and start rotating this one out and then hold my shift key, it will clip to increments of 10 degrees, which is great. So we can get it at 180 degrees, boom, there we go. And then we can do the same thing for the uh, Z axis. Start spinning it that way and uh, hold shift and then clip it at 90 degrees. Now we've got something that looks like this. Okay, so now we can actually connect these two things. Before I do that, actually, um, just because it's a little bit cluttered in the middle here, I may be thinking of making these um, no, that should be all right for the time being. Um, although, mm, all right, let me delete B for a second. And what I'll do is I'll go to the points, go to my rectangle selection, make sure that we've got only select visible elements off and we've got toler tolerance selection on. And uh, we'll select A and we'll grab, just go to this view just to make sure we've got everything, grab all these points here. And then uh, we'll shift these out. There you go. I held shift there as well. So I'd clip to grid points, as you can see, it didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't quite go where I wanted it to go. So I'm just going to undo that and then do it again. Start moving, hold shift. And there we go. Perfect. And then come back out again. Unselect the points. And... Uh, do what we did a minute ago, duplicate this object, call it B, go to the rotate tool, rotate it this way, hold shift to clip, there we go, and then hold shift again, so we can rotate on the Z, 90 degrees, and there we go, we've got our two objects now. So, what do we need to do? Well, uh, I'm going to make a, a uh, well, it's going to be static, so... Well, first of all, let's um, get these in the connector. So if we go to the connector, uh, we've got the basic tab, which is, you know, what you usually find in the basic tab in cinema. Uh, what we're interested in is the uh, object tab. Okay, so it's saying object A, I've called this A, so I'm going to bung it in there. Object B, I'm going to bung it in object B. And then I'm going to hit play and nothing happens. Nothing happens. And that's because um, we need to make one of these uh, dynamic. So, because these are dynamic connectors. So, let's make B, uh, let's give that a simulation, a rigid body tag, and press that. And there you go. It will start swinging. Okay, so that's exactly what you'd expect from this. Excellent. So what now? What happens if we grab this object here and start rotating it? Okay, so we've got, uh, let's go back to zero. Um, we're gonna set, select object A, I'm gonna set a keyframe. So let's key it. Um, just so you know that these things highlighted here, I'm saying that I'm gonna key position, scale, rotation, and a parameter. So that'll be anything in here like these that you can key, uh, put a keyframe on. Um, so that's what you want. We're going to be 
key in a rotation so just make sure this rotation thing is lit up blue not gray like that cool okay so i'm going to zero um i'm going to set a key boom and then i'm going to go all the way to the end and i'm going to start rotating this object so it let's do 360 okay so i've rotated it 360 and we need to set another keyframe there now it should spin between those two values now so let's go back to zero and hit play and see what happens i'm just going to click off all my objects oh look its rotation doesn't seem to be having any effect whatsoever on the other object and that's is again because it needs to be a uh, it needs to have a dynamics tag on it so let's select a um and put a simulation tag on it and we're just going to put a collider body on it so now it is dynamic for all intents and purposes and now you can see that this arm i mean if i undo there was no yellow arm there but when i put the dynamics tag on it boom there you go you got it so let's try it now so when i start rotating this you can see that it's actually having an effect on the other one and it's transferring that angular angular momentum now you can see that they're actually going through each other and colliding um and you may not want that but if you go into the um the collision uh sorry the connector you can see this all ignore collisions now if we took this off we're going to have a problem uh, let's see what happens oh it is going mental son it is going mental and the reason it's going mental is because oh, let's get it back to zero well there's two reasons actually if we select on our uh our collision tag for a we can see the shape is set to automatic so that's not good probably want to set that to a stack mesh maybe yeah that's better that's fine okay so we go back to zero so that's a static mesh because for all intents and purposes it is static and this one we can I wonder if that'll work if I set it to static as well no okay it's because it's a moving mesh okay good so hmm maybe they need both need to be set as moving meshes which makes sense because they're both moving so okay so we've done that oh yeah the arms come back now so yeah that's what we want but now oh the reason that nothing's happened is because we've still got this ignore collisions uh checkbox on but if i turn that off it's not as bad as it was but <laughs> it's having a right old time there and it's because if you've got two rigid bodies and they're intersected and you start the simulation it automatically wants to get out of each other you know it can see there's in intersections there and it's like uh oh and it tries to you know it tries to expel the geometry that's intersecting with it so that is why i had the um i had the ignore collisions parameter on um i suppose the only other way that i can think of combat in that really is by uh is by ignoring the collisions and then we'll put on an angular limit okay okay this this could work then so let's play this now oh sorry put ignore collisions back on oh okay i see i see i see hmm yeah this could be quite complicated but yeah we can limit the angle in this direction which would help and could we do it in this one as well you yeah, know well, let's give it a go okay so we can see the let's just hide these objects for a minute so we can see what's going on okay so that okay that really didn't like that also i'm going to uh i'm going to take the rotation animation off of this just for the time being so i can figure out what's going on in a way well i'm not trying to work in several fucking okay yeah we can see that that is being stopped there which is not what we want at all let's bring these back okay so yeah that's being flung right around there 
and it's being stopped there. So we we kind of want the opposite of that, really. So so it's not from zero; it's from one hundred and eighty and two zero, maybe. Okay, so is that correct? Is that what we want? Okay, okay, so let's, um, okay, so from 180, let's, let's change that value. Okay, so yeah, we want to be less than that. So let's, let's do that again. And we don't want it from zero by the looks of it either. No, that doesn't, that's not a healthy, okay. <laughs> Okay, so maybe that needs to be about 400 then. So is that, there we go. So it stops there and the other way. So let's have a look at it from the side. Yeah, so what did we say? From 145, I'm just gonna rewind that. Yep, yeah, we've avoided a collision there. And at the top, I've got a feeling that that's gonna be Yeah, maybe it is about 400 then. Although, mathematically, that's not perfect, but, hey, whatever. Let's go for 395. So I'm assuming because these are symmetrical shapes and all the rest of it, we can say for the angular limit two, it's gonna be exactly the same. So let's make this 145 to uh, three, Nine five. Okay, so maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, so maybe we're all right there. I've got a feeling we're still going to get some intersection with this blue bit here. I think it's still going to probably clip through, but um, let's find out. Let's go back to this object and we'll set a keyframe here. And then We'll rotate it on the Z 360 degrees. Well, actually, probably. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we'll do 360. And keyframe it there. Go back to the beginning. Let's unselect everything so we can see what's going on. And play our simulation. Okay, so it's stopped there. That's good. Yeah, you can see that it's still going through. Yeah. Okay, but that's pretty much what the cardan does. I mean, there, there's not a lot else it does. It just it it translate ro ro um, rotation through an angle. Um, it's one of the more boring connectors in Cinema 4D, but um, I said I'd go through them, so that's what I'm doing. So uh, if you've got any questions about it, don't put them in the comments or whatever. That's fine. Um, but I think that pretty much wrap, wraps this up. There's not not a lot else I can think of that you can do with these, really. I mean, you could uh, you could even connect a series of them together. So if you wanted to, um, we could duplicate this and put another set of them on the end there. So it's like a sort of chain effect. Um, but yeah, um, I hope this was of some use to any of you out there. Um, cheers for watching, guys. Bye.